Okay, so our body is all rendered out. So at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to start rendering out just the tentacles. So to do that, I'm just going to hide some of our selections here. We don't need this get these guys here. It's going to be a bit of a lag here. All right, hide selection. And we're not going to need any of these lights at all. Switch out of these views. You can just turn each of these off. And then turn our tentacle one on. So again, this will cut off where we where our tentacles end. Alright, so we need to go into our particle flow source and turn it back on to be renderable. This should take a few seconds. All right, perfect. So at this point, we'll, we'll just render a frame, see what we get. Oh, before we do that, we don't want to overwrite our old file. So uh, 0 to 60, 720 by 480. We'll set our file here. back into settings. We'll just set single for now while we figure this out. Okay, so at this point we're getting um, cubes. Uh, they're just they're way too big for what we want. But you can also see kind of what I'm talking about here. We got, when we see them here, we get this uh, cutoff right, right at this point. And then, but we still have an alpha channel. Well, I'm going to go ahead and render them off so that we only get the lights and then in After Effects we'll actually use the white channel of our diffuse to cut off the bottom. So we'll, we'll explore that here in a second. So what we need to do is go in and adjust the shapes or the size of our cubes here. And I do believe there is a way to render them off as points, but I'm rather new to particle flow. So let's see what 0.5 gives us. I think we're going to want to go way smaller than that. We'll actually set this to 1. Okay, so we're kind of getting where we want. We want to go a little bit darker than that, though, or a little bit smaller. We'll set the intensity to this really high as well. We'll have to go really small this time. Set this to 0.5. Render that. Okay, great. So we're, we're getting the effect that we're looking for with these long strands of tentacles going on. Uh, we're having problems. We're not getting uh, enough particles in here to kind of get this solid. So what we'll do is we're going to go into back into our particle flow. And just under birth, we're just going to crank this number up. Add an extra zero in there. So that's really going to give us a lot more particles. And I'm not really worried about the shadows that the cubes seem to emit onto each other. We need to go actually further here. Okay, so I had to pause the video there for a moment to try and find out. Uh, after a certain point, my particles weren't rendering, so I thought perhaps it was my burst size. And um, my burst, uh, sorry, the uh, duration was set to 400, stop emitting after 400. So I set that to 600, and uh, that didn't seem to really take care of the problem either. Um, the problem was that too many particles were being emitted and once it hit a certain number the system was told not to render anymore so if you under, go under uh, particle view under geometry um, I had to or just click on PF source at the top I just had to set the amount of uh, 
particles to a few extra zeros just to allow the computer to keep rendering some more. So uh, at that point, I also uh, changed the size of my um, uh, squares to one. Uh, at this point, uh, you can feel free and try and change them. Uh, sorry, where is my shape here? Uh, shape set to one. Uh, I think I'm going to go with like 0.6 to see what that does for me. Try and drop a frame once this uh, catches up. Takes a few seconds here. Okay, so those are a good size. Now, I know you can see some shadows in here, and we're actually going to be using the Luma map to cut out the object. And once the object's cut out, we're actually going to uh, adjust the lighting so everything that's actually inside the Luma map is pure white. And then we're actually going to put another layer on it that lowers it down to the grayscale. And then we're going to adjust the color to fit what our, our overall color correction is in After Effects. So this may seem like it's not really ready, but a lot of the effects come together in After Effects. So we're going to go ahead and render off this sequence here. So again, render setup. We set our range from 0 to 600, 720 by 480 square pixels, set this file, save here, hit yes, and hit the render button. Okay, so I will come back once uh, 3D Studio Max does its thing. Okay, once everything's rendered out of 3D Studio Max, we're ready to bring everything together in, in uh, After Effects. Uh, just I want to make a plug out there to uh, Lawrence Grayson. Um, He's the one who actually went and I uh, did a quick Google search for After Effects Underwater and I came to his tutorial right away. So I just wanted to say thanks to him and uh, he also has a home to quite a few other tutorials. So please feel free to go check these out and see what you can find. So in After Effects we're going to go ahead and create a new composition. 720 by 480, 24 frames a second. And we're going to go ahead and make a new solid. Alright, we'll make sure this is comp size. And we're going to need an effect for color. Oh, I have to make some room here. For color gradient, we'll drag and drop that onto our solid. And we're going to start changing these colors up a little bit. So we're going to go for a murky look, but you could always go and make a nice clean blue scene. I'm just going to kind of keep with the demonstration that I had done. So just play around with this, I find that color that I'm looking for, a little bit of blue tint to it. Okay, so I'm going to use the eyedropper tool and just get them all the same color, and then I'm just going to play around with the values of them. Okay, so this one here, I know it's going to be really dark. Right, this is where I want the kind of jellyfishes coming from the depths of the ocean kind of thing. I'm just going to blend these all a little better. Alright, so color one, this one here. It's also going to be a little bit dark, but it's the light's kind of bleeding into this one a little better, so we'll just a little bit lighter than that one. This one here is the top, bottom right. This one's going to be almost like the opposite of the other one. It's not going to be pure bright, but it's not going to be dark either. Like that. And then this one here, this is going to be where the light source is coming from. Okay, so we can always play around with these a little bit later, really play around with the blend mode. And some fun with that. Okay, so next we're going to go ahead and start making the particles. So we're going to need a new solid. Alright, doesn't matter what color we make it. And we're going to need an uh, effect called CC Snow. Alright, we'll just double click on that. And we'll set our track mode here to, let's say, soft light. And we're going to lower down the amount of our particles just a few of them. Our speed is going to be actually negative so that instead of going down like they would they were actually going to go up. So there's kind of a play view of how slow they're going. So we're actually going to bring that speed much closer to zero. Right, try that. Okay our amplitude's probably a bit much. We don't mind them going back and forth but maybe not as far and as frequent. So we'll try that. So you get a little bit of jittery in them but not that much. And now they're just a little too slow. 
we'll just bring that away from zero a little bit. Try that. Right now. Maybe a little bit too fast. So it looks like maybe 10 is going to do right. Minus 10. All right, perfect. All right, so I'm just going to play with the size here a little bit. And these are actually going to be our background ones. So we're going to throw a Gaussian blur on this. These ones are going to be quite just a little bit blurry, but not too much. We're also going to have some foreground ones here. So what I'll do is I'll duplicate this solid. And this one's going to be, actually, instead of doing that, I'm just going to duplicate CC Snow. Actually, it's a bad idea. Set this to screen. Okay, so we got two on top here. And under this one, I'm actually going to make these one just a little bit faster, a little bit bigger. And we'll actually scale this up. Just kind of offset them a little bit. We have, actually, if we change the amount, that would be fine too. Have less of them. All right, and we'll blur these a lot more. These will be the ones completely out of focus. So this will give us some depth to the shot. Okay, so I'm okay with that one. Just a few too many particles in the front, so I'll lower that down to five particles. And the one in the back, it too has too many particles, so we'll set that to 15. So something just subtle. Okay, so now it looks like we have some depth to our shot here. Now we might have to play around with these colors now that we set these to... Uh, our screen will actually do fine. Our colors are back to normal. I had one set to soft light. Okay, so next we're going to go ahead and we're going to do the caustics. So this one's actually quite simple. Just create a new solid. Alright, we're going to go find noise. Or fractal noise. Alright, and we're going to go ahead and apply an animation preset to this. Now, if you don't see animation preset, just right click up here on the actual effect controls black solid and just come down to the bottom and make sure show animation presets. Uh, I think in CS4 and higher it's by default turned off. So under animation presets we're going to choose curtain. Okay, And then we're going to also throw in a corner pin. But before that, do that, we'll pre-compose this so we don't mess around with our fractal here. We'll call this uh, caustics. And we'll move all attributes inside. Now we'll go find corner pin. And with this, we can actually play around with some of our points here and try and get the effect looking like it's coming from this angle over here. And I believe if we set this to soft light, we'll kind of get the effect. And it's animated over time. If we open up or go into our effects here, hold Alt, double click on the composition, or you can just double click on it. Uh, under our effect, we'll see that we actually have a keyframe for our evolution. We're just going to take that key and we'll move it down to 600. And if you want, you can preview at this time, I'm trying to see if if the caustics are kind of flickering enough for you. Uh, in my case, I think I'm going to set my evolutions to two and see if that's too fast. I think that's exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, so coming out of the caustics composition, we're going to have to lower our opacity a little bit, get rid of the black a little bit. We can. So this is 25. We'll put a Gaussian blur on top. Blur out the edges a little bit. Okay, great. And I think I'm going to go ahead and make a mask around this. Just at the bottom so it kind of fades out as it gets further down. So I can just come into my mask, set my feather up a little bit. So it kind of dies as it gets further in and further away from the camera. Okay. Just play with our feather a little bit here. Expansion. 